This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello there, ho there. It's Jeff Cutter Dunn and welcome you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And yes, that is Art Modell in the picture. A young Art Modell, if you will. And no, this does not have anything to do with his move to Baltimore in 1995. This on this day, March 21st, 60 years ago, he actually bought the Cleveland Browns. So basically, he was called the savior of Cleveland. He owned the Cleveland Browns for 35 years. And of course, he established the Ravens franchise for nine years. Modell was a key figure in promoting the NFL and was very popular in Cleveland for his active role in the community and his efforts to improve the team. Unfortunately, he made bad actions, including firing Paul Brown, who was basically the legend, a legend in Cleveland and all that. And unlike Jerry Jones, who fired the legend that is Tom Landry, Modell never recovered from it. Modell faced a lot of scorn relocating the Browns to Baltimore. The Brown Modell said that the Browns stuff could stay in Cleveland, but he could retain all the contracts of the Browns personnel and move the, the franchise to Baltimore. Modell is controversial in Cleveland due to relocation and his decision making around the management of Cleveland Stadium. So anyway, during the 40s and 50s, Modell was in public relations and TV production in New York City and got $4 million and purchased the Cleveland Browns for $4 million back well, 60 years ago, of course. He invested only a quarter of a million dollars, and he borrowed $2.7 million and found partners to cover the rest. That would bite him in the butt, in a sense. There was a bit of a rift between head coach Paul Brown and some players, such as Milt Plum and Jim Brown, who questioned Brown's coaching methods and demeanor. Players took concerns to the new owner because they thought that Modell could relate to the disciplinary head coach. In the 62 offseason, Paul Brown traded away Bobby Mitchell for Ernie Davis without Modell's knowledge. Davis was fair after diagnosed with leukemia, and basically Ernie Davis would die and all that. That was basically the, the idea of the Brown, Brown and Modell's working relationship was strained because of Paul Brown trading away for Ernie Davis, despite the fact that Davis was turned... Really, had terminal leukemia. And Davis died before he could play. Davis died, died before playing a snap for Cleveland. Modell basically fired Brown and named Planton Coley as new head coach. However, the 64 Browns, shockingly enough, they got to the playoffs. They got to the NFL championship game against the Baltimore Colts who had Don Shula coach the team with Johnny Unitas as its QB. And guess what? The Browns actually won 27 nothing. So maybe it was a good move after all. I mean, the Browns won the NFL championship. But this is before the Super Bowl, of course. However, despite being in six NFL slash AFC championship games from 65 to 95, Cleveland never won another title. Modell's promotions were huge. Using his background in advertising, he had a flair for the dramatic. He decided to schedule pro football preseason doubleheaders at Cleveland Stadium. He was NFL president for a while and used his TV connections to negotiate the league's TV contracts. And he was willing to provide his team as opponent for both the first primetime Thanksgiving Day game in 1966, and the opening Monday Night Football broadcast of all time in 1970. And he took a community act achievement for Cleveland and all that. He married a TV soap opera star in 1969. He was a well-known bachelor in Manaville Town, but anyway. You know. He even had issues with player contract battles. Five African-American players of the Browns were were involved in a contract dispute in 67 refused to return to training camp. 
Wendell traded at least four of the players with only Leroy Kelly staying. Basically, he would have problems. Is that, you know, Fans were not allowed to have anti Model stadium banners and all that. So Model took control of Cleveland Municipal Stadium as a landlord in 1973, but it was too expensive for the city to operate or maintain. He worked out a deal that his newly formed entity would rent the stadium from the city for $1 per year, assuming all operating repair costs, and would sublease it to the Browns and Indians. Modell was also the landlord of the Indians organization, of course. It was a good business decision, even though the Indians were terrible and didn't draw a lot of player people to their games. So the Browns, who were playing, paying rent to both themselves and Modell by constructing lodges or the predecessor to luxury boxes in the ballpark, generated significant cash flow from the rentals not shared with the Indians. And Modell later claimed that the rentals were not profitable as he had financed their construction at the high interest rates. And he didn't explain why the rental income that was earned was not used to offset the debt. Anyway, the Indians were not too pleased with Modell's stuff and all that. Modell didn't share the revenues with the baseball, of the football team for the baseball teams. Basically, the Indians persuaded the city of Cleveland to fund a new ballpark as known as Jacob's Field, through new taxes. Of course, Modell was dissatisfied because Cleveland was going to move to this new ballpark and basically leave him with only one tenant. And the suite customers actually switched from the older suites in Cleveland, at Cleveland Stadium to the newer suites at Jacob's Field because of the Indians' newfound success and popularity in the 90s. And basically, Modell's Corporation refused to decrease the annual rent for the suites, even though the su the suites could were were being used. The uses were decreased substantially because you know laws on the Indians have a tenant. Modell was actually given a chance to have his Cleveland Browns in the new Gateway Sports and Entertainment Complex. However, he asked for improvements to Municipal Stadium because obviously his Corporation still controlled Municipal Stadium. It made more business sense for Modell to keep the in, try to keep the Indians at Municipal because the baseball teams were showing improvement. But the Indians would go on to be in two World Series after leaving Cleveland Municipal Stadium and sold out 455 straight games. The city of Cleveland approved the the improvements to Municipal Stadium, which would be the extension of the syntax to fund the Gateway Sports and Entertainment Complex. Yeah, Modell was upset that, you know, the Browns weren't given a place. Oh yeah, he was given a, pl a chance. Basically, Modell wanted a new stadium, all that, even though Cleveland said they would improve Municipal Stadium. But basically, he decided to discuss with Maryland to give the Browns to Baltimore in 1986. So basically, yeah. Modell said he lost $21 million in the previous two seasons. A lot of people said that Modell was trying to make the information so that the referendum would be defeated and then he would get what he wanted, but the referendum was passed with a wide margin. Modell was assisted in the move by Al Lerner, who would actually be the new owner of the reactivated Cleveland Browns in 98-99. So basically, Modell was not too happy and decided to team the Baltimore at the, wor at the worst time because Cleveland was 4-1 and one and was looking good in the AFC Central. But then they basically just slid heavily. I think they only won one game, one or two games the rest of the way. I don't know. I don't know what the mark was. But basically, the NFL and Modell worked out a deal. The Browns franchise would be deactivated for three years. Modell wanted to take the Browns name to Baltimore, but basically he decided to leave behind the name, colors, and heritage for a replacement franchise. And all that. 
and but that was allowed to take the franchise right players in an organization to Baltimore to do the Ravens. Cleveland received a loan from the NFL to build a new stadium, which of course was where Cleveland Municipal Stadium what once was. And Lerner got the Cleveland franchise. Modell was okay. Under Modell, the Browns were decent, like a 51% winning percentage in the regular season, but their postseason was seven wins, 14 losses. It was a massive impact. It was an impactful move and all that because they got other cities to think that if they didn't get the funds for a new stadium or arena. Basically, they could move out. A lot of people said that people wanted to give the Browns to Baltimore, like the owners, because in case they have to move and they might not get the votes. So basically sucking up to Modell and all that. So obviously Modell was not that well popular in Cleveland, obviously. There were a lot of people protesting the the move at the final game of Cleveland Municipal Stadium outside than inside. The NBC announcing crew actually acknowledged it. Modell somehow won Super Bowl 35 with the Ravens, and it was pathetic and all that. He was actually mentioned on the Drew Carey show. During a party at Drew's house, which featured many Cleveland personalities, former Browns quarterback Bernie Kosar asked Drew where the bathroom is. Drew directs Kosar to the bathroom and says, just don't take a Modell. So basically, yeah. Modell would die of coronary disease and all that. The Ravens dedicated the season to him. And basically, so yeah, that was weird and all that. So yeah, so Art Modell screwed up. Now the move ruined Cleveland football for a few years. I mean, they're getting back to prominence. Heck, they even won a playoff game last year, which was good. But in closing, I'd like to say that that move to Baltimore actually did wonders in Canada. Like I've said in a few other videos this year, that with Baltimore getting the Browns, they had no, no business getting their CFL franchise, despite the fact they won the Great Cup. It basically, you know, that was basically the end of the CFL U.S. expansion things. So basically, every American franchise was pulled had. To, had the rug pulled out in front of them. Baltimore sold their, their team, everything, like all the stuff to Montreal. And all the Baltimore players went to Montreal to play for the Alouettes. And Montreal had a renaissance of CFL stuff. They've been, appeared in a lot of great cups, but only like two or three titles. But hey, you know what? I grew close to Montreal. The Alouettes in 98, once Flutie left for Toronto, I just couldn't bear it. And I said, you know, I'll find a better team in the Montreal, even though they give me headaches sometimes. You know, I'm still a Montreal Alouettes fan through and through. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I'll do.